Okay, now, one very important key to be filled with the Holy Spirit is praying in spirit and in truth. That we worship in spirit and, and truth, that worship in spirit includes the soul and the spirit. The soul includes the mind, the will, the feelings that in our mind we totally agree with the Bible, with that God, with the idea that God is very good, God is gracious, God is wonderful, God is holy. Totally agree, God is the best. And then the will, I decide to do everything for your glory. I dedicate my life to you. I don't want to take any glory from you. And the feelings that we build up a strong relationship with God that we like God, desire God. That's the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. That all the time we say, God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. Everything, every good thing we see, we say, this is the gift of God. Thank God for the wonderful gift. Thank God for everything good that comes from Him. And then worship with the whole inner being. The whole inner being. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you learn to cry out from God, from the whole spirit and soul, Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We desire you. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. Then it's easier to be filled with the Holy Spirit if we continue to love God like that. And four kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. The prayer of grace. To declare the grace of God to us. God is loving me. God is laying His hand upon me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to do great things in my life. So all this prayer of grace from God to us. Declare, oh God is sending His Holy Spirit to touch my heart, to change my heart. Thank you, thank you Lord. And then prayer of worship. Lord, I love you. I glorify you. I like you. I depend on you. I need you. It's from us to God. Thank you Lord. I love you. I worship you. I adore you. I need you i put in some words like this i need you lord i depend on you i'm happy with you i like you these are also prayer of worship and interactive prayer whenever i love you you are happy you, you are happy with me and bless me you will raise me up to a high level so this is from the bible when we love him he will prepare for us things eyes have not seen ears have not heard and a human mind cannot think of so when we pray, we can say, Lord, I'm loving you now. I know that you are blessing me now. Thank you. So in our heart, when we are loving God and praising God, in our heart we say, Lord, you are happy with me. So I can be sure that you like my prayer. When we pray sincerely, God likes our prayer. That's from the Bible. That Because that when we love Him sincerely, God is very happy. When we come close to Him, He'll come close to us and we'll bear fruit. So that is from the Bible. So it's true that then God is happy with us when we sincerely come to Him. And God is seeking such people. In the last verse, God is seeking, I'm sorry, uh, this is not the verse, it's 423, that uh, Father, the Father is seeking people who, who worship in spirit and in truth. So we can say, Lord, I know that you are seeking people who love you with all our heart. I, I love you now. I desire you. So I hope you learn these four kinds of prayer. And then prayer of commitment. I commit to loving you and serving you and blessing the church. So I commit my life to you. Lord, I give my life to you. I give my time to you. I'm willing to serve you. I'm willing to bless other people. These four kinds of prayer will help us. So I hope you remember this. Prayer of grace is from God to us. God, you are blessing me. You are loving me. You are bringing, you are, uh, you are coming to me and blessing me and giving me uh, strength. And then prayer worship is from us to Him. That we want to say things that are more from our heart. That I need you. I worship you. I depend on you. I like you. I need you. I want to be with you all the time. So we can pray like this. Interactive prayer. Whenever we pray, we know that God is happy with us. God will listen to us. God may not respond to us in our way, in our time, but God will respond in the best time, in His way. Sometimes we say, I want the sickness go away. The sickness doesn't go away instantly, but in a time of sickness, it will help us to rely on God more. So even suffering can be beneficial to us. And then prayer of commitment, that I commit my whole life to you. 
that we commit our whole life to God and 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 submit to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we can learn to pray these four kinds of prayer. Okay, and then how do we pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit? First, we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins. Sins can bring evil spirits. So first, we want to build up a strong relationship with God. And also, we ourselves turn away from all sins because the Holy Spirit doesn't like sin. And we also tell people, repent of your sin and really hate sin. Sins are destructive. Sin will take away the blessings of God. And when you love God and obey God, God is very happy with you and He will for sure bless you. And we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving them and help them to love God. We don't need to shout. Okay, so we can lead people to worship God, to enjoy God. Because God is happy with us that He's rejoicing over us with singing. Zephaniah 3.17 Zephaniah 3.17 He's rejoicing over us with singing. So when we come to God, we can rejoice in God. God, you're so wonderful. I like you, Lord. I enjoy you. I really like this time being with you. Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're a good God. Hallelujah. So we, when we lead worship or prayer, please, when we lead worship, don't just sing. We can have words expressing our close relationship with God. Lord, I come to you now to praise you, to love you. We want to love you. We want to love you with all our heart. I love you now. You are precious. Lord, you are precious. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. So when we lead worship, don't just sing, but lead people to come to God. Very important. So we can say, let us all raise our hearts to God. Let us all rejoice in the Lord and thank God for every good gift from Him. Lord, we need you. We depend on you. We trust in you. We rely on you. We hold on to you. So in this way, people will learn to build up a very intimate relationship with God. And I want to say we don't need to shout. You know, I've seen many people, they think that shouting will bring more power. Now, it's not wrong to shout. But I'm just saying you don't need to. You can shout, but it's not necessary. Some people think you have to shout before the Holy Spirit will come down. That's not true. Or you have to shout before the evil spirit will go away. That's not true. It's not the loudness. It's the faith in God saying, Lord, I know that you want to bless, bless us now. You are with us right now. And if we open our heart right now, you can fill us with the Holy Spirit. You know, what hinders the work of God is us. God always wants to fill us. God always wants to fill every person with the Holy Spirit. It's our sin that blocks the work of God or our reluctance or our heart being not being open, that our heart is not so open to God. But if our heart is open to God, I hunger for you, Lord. I love you. I like you. I desire you. If we learn to really hunger for God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> then it's easy to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be loud. And then also when we shout too much, it will hurt our voice. I've seen people, they shout to drive out demons and then they hurt the voice. And, uh, and then the voice is changed forever. So we don't need to do that. Sometimes I drive out demons in very gentle voice. Oh, in Jesus' name, de demons, go away. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are filling us with the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit has to go away. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I just pray in ordinary voice. Okay, three. We can lay hands on people. Don't push people. Falling does not help people. Experiencing God helps people. Okay? Now we can lay hands on people. When I lay hands on people, I'm very careful just to touch. Just to touch. Don't push. Now some people put their hand very heavy on the person. Then the person feel very heavy. We don't need to do that. Just touching. 
and don't push. I've seen many people, they keep pushing people, keep pushing people to fall down. For what? To show people that they have anointing? Is that anointing? Pushing people down, is that anointing? It's very foolish. They think that they push someone to fall down, it shows that they have the power of the Holy Spirit. No, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't show anything. People can see it and God can see it. So I hope that we don't do things to impress people. Now I have heard from some of my church members, I know that they are telling the truth. They went to a meeting of a famous evangelist who came to Hong Kong. And he was in a choir. And then when this evangelist prayed for the choir members, he was pushing very hard. He said he pushed so hard that forced them to fall down. Why? Because he wanted to impress people that he has a strong anointing. But actually, this kind of, you know, when people experience this, they would tell other people it would ruin their reputation. So, and then we don't want to get build up a reputation by false action by pushing people so I hope you don't do that and if anyone does it please talk to them we are doing the work of God we're not doing human work if we push people we're doing human work and God doesn't like it it will stop the work of God it will stop revival but if we love God we worship God we let God do His work and then we hunger for God. God will for sure come. You know, the main point is God wants to fill us. God wants to. He said, I want, I'm going to fill the all flesh with the Holy Spirit. That He wants to in Acts 2.17. He wants to fill all flesh with the Holy Spirit. He wants to come to us. When we come to Him, He'll come to us. He wants to come to us. He attracts us to Him. So, we understand that God wants to come to us. So it's not hard. We just hunger for God and desire God and delight in God and really appreciate God from the heart and then God will come to us more and more powerfully. Falling doesn't help people. Now if they experience the Holy Spirit and fall down, the experience of the Holy Spirit helps them. It's not the falling. It's the experience of the Holy Spirit helps them. And we, if we can, ask, we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience. When I pray for people, I lay it on them and then afterwards I say, please close your eyes, please close your eyes uh, or keep your eyes closed. I'd like to ask you, did you experience anything during the prayer? And then some people say, I experienced peace or comfort or very light, the burdens go away very light or comfort to the body, or love, or joy, or demons being driven out. And then I tell them, this is what God promised to do. So God is blessing you now. So do you want to believe in Jesus? If he's a non-Christian. And if he's a Christian, then we say, do you want to love God more? Do you want to dedicate your love to God? Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then used by God? So the infilling of the Holy Spirit is very useful to raise up the spiritual life of people. Now, experiencing the Holy Spirit can help people in these areas. It can help us. It can help us to experience God and His work. So we can experience God, His presence, and His peace, and His love, and His healing, and His uh, uh, transformation of our life. And to appreciate God and believe in God. It can help people to say, wow, God is so wonderful. God is wonderful. He's doing things in my life. And then they will, it will cause them to believe in God. It will help people to experience inner healing and bodily healing. So they will experience inner healing of the soul, of the heart, and also physical healing. And it will build up love and zeal for God, that they will love God more and zealous for God. And to drive out evil spirit, it will help people to drive out de demons and to guide people in their lives, to give direction to their lives and to receive spiritual gifts and prophetic words. Now when 
the closer we are to God, the more God will speak to us and guide us and give us spiritual gifts and prophetic words. Everyone who loves God will hear from God. He'll, he might not hear a, an audible voice, but he will have ideas. Ideas to pray for people, ideas to do evangelism, ideas to help people. And to lay hand on people to experience comfort, healing, exorcism, and transformation of life. And we can lay hand on people to help them experience peace and comfort and healing of the body and of the soul and exorcism driving out demons and transformation in their life. And then also laying on, on the hands can help people to serve God and enter ministry that will strengthen people. So laying on the hands is very helpful. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Okay. Repent and turn away from all sins. That's the first step. Repent and really hate sin and turn away from the sins, not just not just repentance, but saying, I hate sins. And then love and follow the Bible and believe the Bible is the best. The Bible is God's Word. I want to follow God's Word. I want to live out God's Word and believe that God wants to fill us. Very important. We don't force God to fill us. God wants to fill us. Four, spend long hours loving God and praying. So long, spend long time loving God with our spirit. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I adore you. I need you. I thank you. I enjoy you. Ha, 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 ha. The more we come to God, the more the joy comes. And then gradually we fill with the Holy Spirit. And obey God in every area, especially the Great Commission. That, you know, the Holy Spirit comes so that we will obey God and, and, uh, carry out the Great Commission to bring the Gospel to people and teach them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. And also take care of problems of, in our lives. Now if a person doesn't take care of his problems, he has anger, he has sins, he has negative emotion, he won't be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the laying on of hands by a Spirit-filled person and Spirit-filled meetings are helpful. Okay, So Spirit-filled people lay hand on us is helpful. Praying in a spirit-filled meeting is helpful, but it won't take the place of our own individual praying. It doesn't mean someone lay hand on you, then you don't need to pray anymore. Actually, I, I've noticed that. Everyone who went to spirit-filled meetings noticed that. When someone lay hand on me, we feel the power right away. But after that, the power starts to go down. When the meeting's over, the power is down more. When we leave the place, the power goes down more. The next day goes down more. So we need to continue to keep that. The reason is because we need a constant relationship with God to keep the strong presence of God. We need a group of people praying together and loving God together to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. And also we need to exercise that and pray for people when we don't have evil spirit and don't have serious sin or negative emotions, then we can start to lay hand on people. And when we practice that, the Holy Spirit will fill us more and more. So this is how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filling with the Holy Spirit is not just one time. It's a continual thing. And it can go down if a person doesn't keep that relationship. So repent and turn away from all sins and love and follow the Bible and believe that God wants to fill us and spend long time loving God and praying to Him, obeying God, especially the Great Commission, and take care of problems in our life, and laying on of hands and uh, spirit-filled meetings are helpful. 